Heads up, audio listeners, you're about to hear a videotaped conversation. For the full experience, you'll find the video version of this episode on Spotify or YouTube. By the way, said Donkey, did you hear those rumours about rabbits covered with keratin-based fur and filled with blood and veins and intestines full of bacteria and acidic liquids? Oh, yuck! How gross, said Rabbit. Sorry, said Donkey. They were silent for a while. That is a moment from a movie called The Conversations of Donkey and Rabbit, a quick little short by a filmmaker known for, let's say, grander visions. She's legendary Hungarian filmmaker Ildiko Enyedi. Her sci-fi classic My 20th Century won the camera door at Cannes back in 89, and this year, nine movies and an Oscar nomination later, she returned to the festival, this time to head up the jury that picks the best short film of the whole competition. I'm Rico Galliano. This is the Movie Podcast. Welcome to a special season of conversations from the 2023 Cannes Film Festival. This is Episode 9, Hilda Cohen Yeti on Short Cinema. Starting with a little pandemic era short of her own, you just got a taste of. It was uh, 2020, so okay. during the real lockdown. And... Um, it's a tiny three minutes film, very close to my heart and to the heart of those who made it. I was stuck in Budapest. Marcelli, my cinematographer um, and good friend, was stuck in LA. We uh, made conversations. So um, I had a little rabbit, he had a little donkey, and these two animals were. Co- conversing about the big questions of life. We should probably specify not a real rabbit and donkey having a conversation. <laughs> These were, it That's was, true. It, Stuffed animals. So they were, but those were in two separate spaces? I was shooting um, in Budapest in my eight square meter study where I was isolated from my family, having uh, one of the first ones uh, to have the COVID. Oh. And Marcel was in Los Angeles stuck um at least he had a garden actually tomorrow he comes to to town yeah and we plan to shoot the next conversations of rabbit and donkey here at can here in can so together at last yeah they (laughs) meet then they separate again and who knows what the future brings had you made a short in a very long time after film school i made one short one single short um, it it's a love story between an, a teenager alien and a human humanoid teenager. There's a part of me that thinks that making a short is much harder because you've got to compact things. For, and I'm wondering if you felt the same way or or what you were feeling as you were making that short, as opposed Actually, to your features. It, it it can be, and and you can see also in can it can be considered from two sides. It can be um, the first tries of the future Mm. feature filmmakers. And um, I'm very happy um, to also judge uh, film school films because um, I somehow I I became really uh, very much addicted to teaching, which is not really teaching. It's working together with, with young people. And the other thing is really tough when when you made features to really boil down to several mm-hmm. minutes, um, it functions very differently. What impact do you have in picking the um, shorts that are in the competition? Is that your purview as well? You and the jury pick the ones that are in? You don't? Absolutely not. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's a very different. I think they made... Um, boiled down to to this very narrow number from several thousands. Four thousand. Yeah, four thousand something, yeah. Yeah. And to how many there are eleven shorts in competition, something like that? Yes. Then your jury is seeing these movies fresh. They've Absolutely. Been picked by somebody totally. Else. W- in cinema. So n- nothing influences us beforehand. I have they're not available by design. You're not supposed no. to have ever shown them before to get no. into can. Yeah. But they they do have trailers, which is kind of amazing, a trailer for something that's already short. But I've looked at them and some of these trailers are just amazing, amazing looking. But it 
brings to mind a question, which is that, you know, this is, as you said, this is a way for students or first time filmmakers to really get their foot in the door. It's like their way to start making movies or to like maybe foment the idea for a feature, but it feels like the bar is already so high, you know, like there was a time I feel like where you could make a short and it'd be like on a shoestring. Now I still, I feel like even shorts are on such an incredibly high technical level. Do you, do you worry that it's maybe a disincentive for people to like try it? I don't because actually um, with the, um, with the different hubs on the internet, the different possibilities to appear, for example, like movie, hmm. but many Thanks. others, um, um, tiny films can get a chance to, um, to get their audience. So actually, uh, Actually, it was um, really um, terrifying to make shorts, let's say, 20 years ago. and uh, Because no one would see them, you're saying? Yeah. And, and now uh, you can gather from, uh, your audience from the globe. Well, this is true. Distribution, in a, in a way, may be easier in that sense. There are more platforms for it. Yeah. But I'm talking about just the barrier of entry to making them. Once again, I have to go back to um, to my school films experiences and sometimes I see um, rich schools well equipped mm. schools mm. in good contact with um, different equipment providers and the films are shiny they are perfect but <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's so, nothing there they used to have, I remember back in the day, they had before you know there were any platforms for these kind of things, they would actually have roving festivals of shorts where you go to the cinemas you yep. know that was the only way of seeing these yeah. things and i remember seeing some things that were that i still remember today particularly animated shorts that were still like i remember seeing the first simpsons animated short oh. bizarrely that obviously <laughs> but actually we, it's not Cannes; it's berlin but i remember the the short of ruben östlund oh really which yeah what is it incident by a bank but i have you seen it no Ah. <laughs> what, what? wonderful extremely funny everything is already there like every it's awesome well, it's, it's him it's fully him it's fully him elegantly simple hmm. uh, actually the, the the camera is in one position it's just uh, one shot one shot yeah zooming and moving a bit but um i mean panning a bit and you can also see that uh, some influence from Roy Anderson, who I think, I think uh, I am not uh, mistaken that uh, he, he was teaching in the film mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and they seem so different. And through that film, you can understand that sort of sharp, cruel, <laughs> very right eyes, how they watch the world it is true when you go back and see like the early shorts of a filmmaker and see like all the beginnings happening there mm -hmm. do you have maybe a set of criteria that you have for a short like what makes for a good short if you had to tell a student how to make a like three rules for making a good short or three things to avoid or something like that do you have such a thing number one never listen to the three rules <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good so the one rule is there are no rules yeah, I think everyone in the cinema wants to be surprised and blown away um, emotionally. And you can be blown away emotionally if if the heart of that person is in it. And um, if if this passion to, to tell something goes through, uh, even the clumsy attempts can become a style. Mm -hmm. If they want to... Um, achieve something with a short that, okay, this is the step and then I, I can get financing for and so on. It dries out this sort of magic. Um, mm. What is nice and also terrifying in our profession that uh, we are cheating all the time, that's filmmaking, but every lie is very visible. Whatever you want to hide, you can't. Mm. Even your moral lies can appear in the sound design or or in the yeah. choice of of um, 
the typography or whatever. So mm, better be truthful. Ildiko and Yeti, her jury awarded the short film Palm d'Or to 27, a film by Flora Anabuda. You can judge for yourself how truthful it is when it gets released in the coming year. And that wraps up our mini season of Can Conversations. It was an honor speaking to these very special filmmakers at this very special festival. We'll be back later this year with a season of our regular documentary style deep dives into cinema history and culture. Follow us so you don't miss it. Till then, this episode of the Movie Podcast was written and hosted by me, Rico Galliano. Kira McKenna produced along with Elodie Fagan and Josefina Perez Portillo. Mustafa Koka edited the show, and Michelle Cho is our supervising editor. Yuri Suzuki composed our theme music. Music. Our camera crew in can included Cedric Azar, Alice Dupla, Rob Godfrey, Solal Coulon, and Mattis Toti. Special thanks to Mubi's additional team in can, Eric Eisenberg, Sam Letter, and Ilias Malki. This series is executive produced by me, along with John Baranichea, F.A. Cecharel, Daniel Kasman, and Michael Taka. If you're a Spanish speaker, our sister show Mubi Podcast Encuentros is also posting interviews taped to can with Latin American filmmakers. Watch or listen wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, to stream the best in cinema, head over to movie.com to start watching. Have a great summer and may all your cinemas be well air conditioned. Mm-hmm.